going on guys I am back this is Friday November 17th we have an 11 game slate so it's another big one um, I don't know if anybody played last night's two game slate um, I did not I can't handle a two game slate you end up playing too many guys that aren't very good um, and you have to be on that big chalky guy otherwise you're in trouble if you're not and he goes off so with that said let's get into Friday um, first game we have up is Pacers Pistons um, line right now has uh, Pacers implied at 105.75 let's bump those up so I can actually read them correctly um, I mean it's a it's a mid-tier game for tonight there are a lot of pretty high totals, particularly in the late games. The 1030 set is going to have a lot of stacks. So if you think you're sitting pretty early, um, get ready because a lot of people are going to have a lot of player minutes left. Um, taking a look at Indiana, and I don't really see anything that jumps out as this guy's a must play. They don't have any real injury news. Their lineup has been pretty set since Turner came back. Um, you know, the Pistons are a, a good team, so it should be a good game, but it might not necessarily be the best fantasy game. Um, just thinking about it for a little bit. There are guys on the Pacers that you could take that are fine. Like, they, they'll work as filler. You know, you can, you can roster Collison... You can roster Oladipo. You could roster Thad. What has Sabonis done in his past couple? 23, 27, and 17. He had 27. I'm just trying to see how he's been playing with uh, Miles Turner back. He needs 27 to hit 5x. I mean, you can roster Sabonis as well. Um, he's probably still priced a little bit too high now, so I wouldn't, it wouldn't be like my favorite play in the world. Basically, all of the dudes in Indiana are in play just because of the pace of the game and the fact that it should be close, um, but none of them stand out as anything particularly sexy. Um, same sort of situation on DK, although it looks like on DK they have a little bit even more difficult pricing for the Pacers, so... If you like it, go for it. Um, otherwise, that's it, probably not going to be a place I end up. We'll hop to Detroit. Should put in like a button to do that all at once. Anyway, let's see Detroit. So Drummond is standing out for me right now. Um, A little weary of Miles Turner just because he's an active guy. Um, 91, so he needs 45 and a half for 5x. The last two haven't been the best. Lower minutes two nights ago. A couple 50 bombs the week before. Um, I like Drummond tonight, I guess. Um, I'll put him on the short list. I know uh, someone mentioned in the live stream from Wednesday night before lock, which is happening again tonight, um, somewhere around 6 o'clock till 7 o'clock Eastern. I'll do uh, a live stream of my lineup build um, right up until lock, so I'll take any questions anybody has. Um, pretty open forum. But yeah, I think Drummond's at least worth a closer look at center. He's not an, an immediate disregard. Um, other than that, you know, I knocked Stanley Johnson's minutes down a little bit. He's only he only played 18 in his first game back, um, so I've only got him at 26 here. So nothing really looks amazing. Again, this is just going to be sort of a good game, but not necessarily the best fantasy game. It wouldn't shock me if they went crazy in this game and it ended up being some sort of like GP winning GPP winning stack of you know like two or three guys from both of these teams because like you know they're they're happy to do it but it's, you wouldn't bet on it prior to the game 
Let's bounce to the Wiz now. Um, they are hosting the Heat. Wizards have a 106.5 implied total, which is eighth on the night. It's not bad. Um, and there's going to be some value here. Gortat's always going to come out really well in uh, like the projection out of over a 1K. So it's just because he's sort of efficient in the time that he plays. So he's always going to look good on a minute by minute basis, but he's not necessarily ever going to be like the most gigantic value play, especially on an 11 game slate. So if you want to punt center, there are like Gortat's a pretty safe option, relatively speaking. Um, but he's never going to be like the sexy play of the day. And, you know, the last game he put up 13 fantasy points, but he has the ability to put up 30 like he did a couple nights ago, which is, you know, big business for him. But anyway, um, Wizards Heat. I like Wall. I like Beal. Um, Wall at 97 is pretty expensive. It's kind of scary. He needs 48.5 for 5x. Basically hit it two nights ago. Had two nights of you know, lesser production and then hit it again in the two before that. Um, I think, I just think it's a good spot for him. So we'll add wall. And I do like Beal as well. I'm, if you're getting a lot of like Dion waiters guarding you, which is pretty, I would imagine pretty likely at least for Beal. Uh, he waiters isn't exactly setting the world on fire with his defense. So Beal needs 38 and a half. You know, he had it in his last time out. He has the ability to go real crazy. And he's got now, the, the Bradley Beal of now, not necessarily the Bradley Beal of, you know, two years ago. He's got a pretty high floor. Um, he's not someone that I get super nervous about. He's going to have to have a really bad shooting game to really submarine you. I don't really have any interest in anybody else on the Wiz. You know, Marquise still isn't getting his minutes. Um, you know, Otto Porter scares me on a night-to-night -night basis because he really can just disappear. He hasn't been doing it this year, and I should probably bump that usage. What has his usage been on the year? Because I have him real low, but I think he's made a pretty sizable jump. No, not really. He's still only at, you know, 16%. I'm going to bump him up a percentage point. Oh, I didn't enter that as a percentage. Did I? No, I did not. He's going to score way too many points if he has a thousand usage. So yeah, that makes him look a little bit more desirable, but I'm not going crazy over Otto Porter. My only looks today are Wall and Beal. And we got the Heat. My Probably my least favorite team in fantasy. On paper, they look great. You know, it seems like these guys are in good shape. They've got a relatively short rotation of like r big minutes, you know, guys that you can roster. And I just picked the wrong one constantly. It's so insane. Like I had Tyler Johnson in my lineup two nights ago and pulled him out on the Chalmers news. And like that worked out, but he was going real ham in the first half. And it was just like, okay, that's the Tyler Johnson night where I thought I had him. I took him out and then he does well, but you know, it, it was mild in the end, luckily. Um, but it was shaping up pretty ugly. So white side, I'm fine with. Um, I lost my short list. White side, I'm fine with. And I gotta add Beal here as well. I think Tyler Johnson looks really good on DK. Just because of the dual eligibility, it gives you the ability to really maneuver your lineup and, and fit him in a little bit better. And at 44, for someone that's supposed to get, you know, 30 plus minutes, you'll get pretty close. 
and I touched about it. I touched on this in uh, my last video. Um, he's got an 18% usage, and he gets 50% of his fantasy points from scoring. So he's a balanced guy. He's not someone that's out there getting 71% of his points from shooting, and he's very reliant on somebody else getting him the ball. Like he's going to get it in a bunch of different ways, which feels pretty good. Um, so I, I'm never like nervous, even though he torpedoes my lineups regularly. You know, like a 8.3, whatever. So I, I'd probably say only Whiteside as a look here, um, as like a, you know, you should definitely focus on someone. And then I think Tyler Johnson, which I'll ultimately regret one way or the other, um, especially on DK, because of that eligibility, it makes him a, a sexier play. We're going to Brooklyn in the Jazz, which is blech. not a game that is going to get many minutes on the TV in my house. <laughs> That's for sure. Or probably anyone's house, really. You know, be a pretty diehard Nets fan to want to tune into that. The Jazz are great, but, you know, no go bear is a, a real thing. Um, so the Jazz are in Brooklyn and are still two point favorites, even without Rudy Gobert. If you're curious to know how bad the Brooklyn Nets are, um, Spencer Dinwiddie on DK is good spot. 5,500. You know he's going to get 30 plus. Or should get 30 plus minutes. Um, huge value in my projections. So I, he's definitely someone you need to look at with um, D'Angelo Russell. It's early, guys. It's 7.09. I started doing this stuff. I started updating the sheet at 6.15. Brain's not firing yet. This is still full of coffee. I don't... I haven't had it yet. I'm trying to get this stuff updated and out the door before I leave for work. Um, you know, the, again, this isn't... Like, Brooklyn's not a sexy play. Excuse me. Brooklyn's not a sexy play. So you don't want to have to get any of these guys. They're all like mid twenties minutes. Someone will, someone will have a big night, and like you know he'll be four percent owned or something in a crazy GPP. But you're not playing these guys for cash. And yeah, let me be specific. What I'm talking about, uh, any guys, I am like m for the most part speaking about whether or not I would want to roster them in a cash situation. In GPPs, sort of anything goes. You're making plays on ownership percentages more than anything else. You want one guy or maybe two guys in a lineup to offset um, a lot of the chalk that you have to provide differentiation for your lineup. So you're hoping to hit a guy that's, you know, 5% owned, 6% owned. I mean, lower than that is great, but then that usually leads me to believe that I was probably wrong to begin with. But if you get someone in the real low ownerships, that's the stuff that types that will differentiate your lineup and get you uh, higher in a GPP. So that's sort of the focus there. But for cash, I want I want guys with you know high floors, but also sort of high ceilings. It's, you know, having your cake and eating it too. Um, just ignore Brooklyn. It's it's Dinwiddie, and that's it. And the Jazz, like you would you would expect the Jazz to be like value town with Gobert out. You know, Rubio is questionable, so it's if Rubio is out, uh, it's going to open up some real weird stuff for the Jazz, like fire up Alec Burks type nonsense. But for right now, I've got him in, so I'm not going to super overreact to that stuff. Uh, Jazz have the same total as the Pacers, so they're they're in that mid tier. Um, favors up to 6,500 on. FanDuel is still okay to me, but that's a he's that's probably the like I won't go much higher than that on him. Um, on DK, uh, fire him up, fifty nine hundred forward and center, great, yeah, just just do that and don't worry about it. Um, I would imagine he's gonna have a blast here. Uh, other than that. I don't entirely believe my Donovan Mitchell projections, so let's see here. 
he needs 32 to hit 5x. Has he been doing that? Admittedly, uh, the Jazz aren't someone that I keep under the microscope. So 47. He can get there. Hmm. Against Brooklyn. Okay, so I have no issues with Donovan Mitchell on DK. I'm even going to shortlist him to look into it a little bit more. I think it's somebody that I need to watch some highlights on. I saw him hit a couple threes. Well, probably, I guess it was Wednesday night. Um... But maybe it was maybe it was Monday night. I don't know. Some night where he hit a couple threes in a row and was just going ham. Um, so yeah, take a look at him on DK. He's okay on Fanduel. Um, it's worth a look. Other than that, you're waiting on Ricky Rubio news because if he's out, that's going to open up all sorts of great stuff. That that'll be a great spot for value. Now Cleveland. Everybody's favorite team. Cleveland and the Clippers. Cleveland at home. Um, 114.5 implied total. That's second right now um, behind the Nuggets. So this is a great spot for Cavs. Um, I would like it more... I would like LeBron more if Gallinari was playing, oddly enough, because I don't, you know, it's I know that he's not a very good defender, and he would be great to just have on the floor a little bit more. But, I mean, every day should basically just start with LeBron James on a short list because he's LeBron James. He's expensive. Don't get me wrong. You're, you know, you're, you're paying up. Eleven and change is a lot, but he's just amazing. So he needs a look. Um, I like him a lot tonight. I cannot believe the Clippers are only six point underdogs in Cleveland with no Beverly. Right? We'll find out when I click on the Clippers. No Beverly. No Teodosic. No Gallo. Like Austin Rivers to the rescue, I guess. Um, other than that, for the Cavs, he, like the Cavs are weird because they have the second highest implied total, and pretty much everyone else on the team, from a fantasy perspective, like looks like shit. I've got Rose in right now. Um, if he's out, that will allow other people to get open back up. You know. Um, like, I probably like Wade tonight if Rose is out. And if you think that tonight is the night, or well, like one of those nights where Kevin Love is playing like Kevin Love and not just some guy on the Cavs, then go for it. I mean, he's 74 on FanDuel. Ooh, 76 on DK. Yikes. So he needs 37. Like, he, he hit his value last time out. Stinker earlier this week and then you know he had that 53 point crazy game. he had 62 so like if you think you're getting that Kevin Love he's a no-brainer at 74 um, I'll have to look into how he matches up in games against he should be seeing like a lot of DeAndre right he ha like he has to if he's gonna be playing with five Will they bring... I can't see wanting to bring DeAndre too far out of the paint, but they... Yeah, this might be a Kevin Love night. I don't know if everyone here... This is probably going to take me way more time than I needed to. Um, ben Falk's Cleaning the Glass site has a ton of just awesome stats to check out. I've just been getting into it lately so um, I would recommend everyone sign up for this it's to me well worth it and uh, I want to say it's like five bucks maybe something like that but I want to see the shooting breakdown they have like real in-depth stuff that you don't normally get so what I'm going to do 
is take a look at Clippers team stats. This is sort of a deep dive that should have been like another video instead of this. Defensive shooting stats. I don't have to subscribe. I've already subscribed. Why won't it let me log in? I have a nervous feeling about the audio. Bouncing in and out. I hope y'all can hear me still. Because I have a feeling you can't. We'll figure it out. There we go. So, I'm going to duplicate this, hop to Kevin Love's page as well. So I want to see where Kevin Love shoots the most, and I want to see where the Clippers sort of give up those shots. So nothing very specific there. So what this is saying, what I want to see is frequency. I don't care how well people are shooting against the Clippers. I want to know where they're giving them up. So they give up the most amount of long mid-range shots, which could be interesting for Love. He's pretty balanced, but he's he takes a pretty high amount of corner threes and not, well, just threes in general for his position. Um, but the Clippers are generally pretty average in uh, giving up just threes, and they're they're pretty bad at stopping corner threes. So this might be like a I'm not gonna play him, but it's not gonna shock me to see Crowder or Jeff Green have a crazy shooting night popping corner threes. And if Love ends up in the corner, that's how I think you end up with one of those 50-point Kevin Love nights. I'm not digging into it <clears throat> too much because this is an 11-game slate, but if you want to get tricky on a GPP, I think Crowder or Green are in a spot to... Like, you're betting on, one, them getting a lot of looks, and two, making those looks, which is fine. But the Clippers defending uh, corner threes is not the best. They're going to give up some volume there. That could be good for those guys. That's all. Go to Cleaning the Glass. Sign up for Ben Falk's site. It's awesome. That's my plug. I've got no tie to it. He's too smart for me. Listen to him on podcasts. Listen to him on Dunk Don. Listen to him on, uh, on Zach Lowe's podcast. It's a good listen. Guy's got a lot of experience. Clippers. How is this game only six points in Cleveland? Is Cleveland that bad? Is Cleveland so bad that the Clippers can be missing three starters and they're still only six-point favorites at home? They're, they are just not very good. So, yeah. I'm not going to touch Sandarius Thornwell. Uh, it's, he can. He's a got. He's great value. You know, he's 3,800, and he's going to get the minutes. Um, I, there's got to be better places than that. I liked him in college, but it's just it's scary. Um, same with like Jawan Evans getting 20 minutes. Like, just it's not. Those aren't the spots. Um, Lou Williams is definitely in play. On DK, maybe. How big did his salary jump? And I know he had the crazy 60-pointer here. How much has his salary gone up in like the last week? I thought he was going to be crazy. He's the second most expensive Fandle shooting guard. Holy sh... Okay, so that makes sense. I was I just assumed Lou Williams wasn't going to be 7,700. I figured he'd be like 59 or 6. But he's 77, so don't yeah, no, I'm good. I don't need $7,700 Lou Williams. Take 
Bradley Beal, take Oladipo, take every other guy at 7,700. Look, I like Lou Williams. He's going to score, um, and he's going to gun for it. And the Cavs' backcourt is uh, trash on defense, but 7,700 is way too expensive for Lou Williams. I'll probably regret that. But he needs 38.5 for value. Um, that's not a spot for me. I do like Blake, though. I think he's in a pretty good spot. 8,600. Um, needs 43 to hit 5x. Was close to it earlier this week. He's been down for the last week or so. Maybe two weeks. I think the Cavs will probably be the cure for what ails him. They got a 108 implied total. Um, you know, seventh ranked team. It's worth a look. And then. So, like, DeAndre and Love are a tough one. I feel like it's hard to like one more than the other. Because I like, on paper, I like DeAndre. He's, that's, you know, 7,000. He should. He needs 35. Like, that's really attainable. He doesn't really have the point guard to, like, set him up perfectly in that pick and roll game. But. Like, 7,000 is just pretty cheap. But, like, if you expect DeAndre to do well, it's hard to expect Kevin Love to do well at the same time. You know, they both love getting boards. Uh, if you like DeAndre Jordan, I understand why you like DeAndre Jordan today. I don't know if I'm going to shortlist him. I probably should. Because he's so much bigger and so much more athletic than Kevin Love. But I can't do it. There's something about me that feels weird about it. It's probably bad intuition. Let's get to the Raptors before I talk myself into it. Alright. Uh, Raptors hosting the Knicks. Raptors with a 112.5 implied total right now. Third on the night. Um, DeLon Wright is out. So for all you people that want to fire up Fred Van Vliet, don't do that because it's Fred Van Vliet. It's a tough name to say. Fred Van Vliet. Van Vliet. Mm. No. With that said, I would take a nice hard look at Kyle Lowry. I would take a nice look at DeMar DeRozan. Um, I definitely like OG on FanDuel, 3,200. Like, by, by being able to funnel him in, uh, now that they've had a day off, which I should have thought about it, and I actually said something about it um, on Wednesday that I know that he had knee problems, you know, and this is a back-to-back, -back, but for some reason it didn't really trigger in my head that he wouldn't get the same sort of minutes. And then I walked downstairs after lineup lock on Wednesday, was flipping through my Twitter and saw the note that, you know, he was probably going to get lesser minutes just because they haven't ramped him up enough coming off of the injury. And I was like, no shit, I should have known that. Um, luckily he was super chalky, so like him having a crap game isn't as big of a deal in cash. If you're going to miss on a $3,200 punt that 60% of the people have, like that's not the place that's sinking your lineup. Um, that place is uh, Anthony Davis, <laughs> if you're curious. So I think Lowry and DeRozan are both real good looks. I, I usually always get DeRozan wrong. The days that I take DeRozan are the days that his shot's not falling. Um, but he's got a crazy projected usage, and he gets a lot of it from scoring. So dude's going to gun as long as he's on the floor. Um, you can you can bet on that one. Um, but So take a look at Larry and DeRozan. It's not like the Knicks' backcourt is great shakes. Um, you, know, you know, Frankie Smokes or what, Jared Jack. I don't like, that's fine. I mean, Smokes has been playing decent defense, but... 
I mean, Lowry and DeRozan are seasoned dudes. That he's gonna show those. Guys, he's gonna show Smoke something that he's not ready for. I wouldn't have expected to write down three uh, Toronto guys, but whatever. Now to the Knicks, 104.5 implied total. It's 12th on the night. Um, it's, I'm, without looking at anything, I'm going to assume it's just Porzingis and nothing else. Um, ooh, Porzingis, 9,000 on DK. That is expensive. I mean, in relative terms. It's 9,000 on FanDuel as well, which makes him look great. So... Let's see. It'll be a lot of a Baca, I guess. Which is fine by me. Chris Stapps, Porzingis. So I would be less likely to take Porzingis on DK on FanDuel at 9,000. Um, way more likely. But that's a pretty sizable drop off. Zinger needs 45 for 5x. Hasn't done it the past two, but you know he went pretty crazy at the beginning of the month. Um, and barring any foul trouble, like he's gonna fill up the stat sheet one way or the other. So he's not gonna be the guy I build around or anything like that because he's a mid-tier guy in just like a normal situation. But um, if he like pops up in optimizers for me and like there's nobody else that stand like that I'm not locking in, you know, three other high price guys immediately. I would be more than okay with having Porzingis. The rest of it I'm not interested in. Um No, that's I'm good. Um Bulls Hornets is a game that I shouldn't even look at. I will open up the Bulls just for um Everyone that is curious to look at them, I've got Justin Holiday back in the lineup. Uh, for everybody that was like, let's play the Bulls last on Wednesday, um, they're shit. They're still shit. They have the worst implied total on the night, 95.75. Um, just, like, if you want to take Bobby Portis, take Bobby Portis. He's 5,000 on FanDuel. Um... I'm actually going to write that down. He's the only option. So if you've got 5,000 left on power forward, roster Bobby Portis. That's fine. Um, you know, the Hornets aren't the best matchup for him entirely, but just, like, he, he's just he's only 5,000. He's 6,200 on DK. Don't touch him. Don't touch any Bulls on DraftKings. Um, the, you know, they could score 140 in some weird-ass game where they shoot the lights out tonight, and I'll look dumb, but... I'm fairly confident that you don't want to roster a single, single bull on DraftKings at all, full stop. Even marketing. So just ignore it. Oh, it's going to be cold today. Hornets. My, my Charlotte Hornets, so to speak. Shout out to the state of North Carolina. So if Batum is just going to play crazy minutes, um, you know, he's probably worth a, a gander. I didn't expect him to play, what did he play, 31, I think? 32. He played 32 minutes in his first game back. Crazy, dude. He's just a crazy person. Um, look, like, Kemba's a good value on paper, on FanDuel, but again, it's the Bulls. Like, they're seven-point favorites on... Well, the Hornets are seven-point favorites on the road. The Hornets have the 17th highest implied total. Like, it's just an ugly, not good spot. Um, Just, I'm not... I'm done with it. Just don't play that game. It's not your spot. Spurs. Spurs Thunder. Fun game. Um, fun game for the NBA not fun game for fantasy. This is the 19th and 20th ranked teams in implied total tonight. Uh, Spurs only projected for 100. The one point line right now, which is kind of exciting. There's nothing on the Spurs you want. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't see any spot where anything pops off the page as a guy that you would really want to dig into. So I'm just going to bounce right over to Oklahoma City. Man, I got... Um, 
I really liked Westbrook on Wednesday. And he had like 38 fantasy points or something at the half. And the problem was those stupid Chicago Bulls were getting their asses handed to them. And, you know, he had a relatively quiet second half. But I, I was just... I was hoping he could even hang a little bit more on them in the first half. I assumed that Oklahoma City was going to blow them out. They were like 13-point favorites or something. So you're just hoping it doesn't get too out of hand by the time he needs to come out. And he still played, you know, like 31 minutes or something, if I remember it correctly. So I went back to look at it, because when I went to 32 minutes, you know, like he had 37 or 30. 30, 36, 37, 38, somewhere in that neighborhood at halftime, and I was like, oh shit, like he's gonna, he's got a real good chance to hit value. This is before Embiid put up 90, and it made no difference how anybody played. Um, I liked Westbrook there. How does Westbrook normally play against the Spurs? Holy shit, this price is tanking. Right, he put up 60 last year. Late. Put up 60. 50. Look at. Give me Westbrook. I like it. Look, his price is dropping. He's 10,000 now. He's 50. Um. I'm comfortable with that. Should be a close game. Uh, like, I don't love the implied total. He's not going to be the first thing that I look at, but his value is great. Um, I don't really want any part of Paul George or Mello. They could look good, but... And I have Steven Adams in for 30 minutes. But otherwise, um, it, it's Westbrook and nothing else for me. I'll take a look at the Mavs now. Mavs, 102.75 implied total. It's 16th on the night. Um... Don't expect anything here of uh, super importance. You see that short list is short for uh, an 11 game set, especially with only a couple more games left, but there is so much, like that's the spot. The 1030 spot is gonna have some guys. Um, man, Dallas is like the kings of uh, dual position eligibility on DK. Four guys at point guard, shooting guard. It's just a team of hybrids. Call them the Dallas Priuses. There's a terrible joke for you. Um, Man, I have no feel on Dallas. It's just like a team. And I love the maps. Huge Mark Cuban fan. If you go back to my parents' house in Pennsylvania, you're going to see a bunch of Dirk like magazine clippings and cards and posters and shit all over my room huge Dirk fan. I don't pay attention to the Mavs at all. They are wholly uninteresting for some reason, which is crazy. Rick Carlisle's an incredible coach. Like, Dennis Smith is super fun, but they've got all these guys like Berea and Devin Harris. Like, just dudes that I didn't expect to still be in the league, and they play, like, real minutes for the Mavs. I mean, I guess that's why the Mavs are absolutely atrocious. How big of an asshole does Nerlens Noel have to be to get traded for last year? His defensive numbers up until this year have always been great. And now he's getting like five minutes, two minutes, six minutes, DNP. Like, he, he must just be like a real horrible person. I guess trust the process that it works. You know, Simmons is great and Bede is great, but... Oh boy, uh, Nerlens Noel... Jaleel Okafor. Two big misses, apparently. And nothing to do with fantasy. Um, Yogi Ferrell needs... He's 38 on DK. Like, that's not going to be the best play. Uh, he probably looks pretty good in a in a GPP, but for 3,800, if you needed to punt at shooting guard, that's not bad on DK. Just, you know, point guard, shooting guard eligibility. You can make things work there. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm good on Dallas. Pass. Timberwolves. For a split second, 
I had Jimmy Butler in as my small forward on Wednesday. And I ended up getting off of him and onto Covington. Not that it went really well, but whew, early Jimmy Butler was putting up a big time egg. It didn't get like super better. I mean, he had, he came pretty close to hitting value in the end, but man, oh man, did he not look good. Um, that's really funny. The so Wiggins is a small forward, power forward on DK, and the shooting guard on Fanduel. We're just making positions up. Might be the time to change it to like point guard, wing, and bigs or something along those lines. Cause I just Wiggins, he's not a power forward. He's not a power forward if Jimmy Butler is a shooting guard. Anyway, Timberwolves and Mavs. Um, yes, I would like some Carl Anthony Towns, please. Ugh, I don't like typing your name, buddy. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's, just, it's the Mavs. It, it, I like Taj, especially on FanDuel at 49. I think I shouted him. I think Minnesota had to play Dallas relatively recently, right? Um, center, Towns. Yeah, November 4th. Like... Who's going to stop Taj Gibson or Towns from doing anything in the paint? Dirk? He's just going to be banging around down there. Dude moves like Frankenstein's monster. And I love him, but it's just not really going to be an impediment on the defensive end. Taj should just mark dudes for rebounds. And then, I don't know if I mentioned it, 109.25 implied total for Minnesota. Sixth on the night. So I like Towns. I like Gibson. Do I like Teague? Needs 33 and a half to hit value. Yeah, uh, you can get a lot of Minnesota tonight. What about Wiggins and Butler? Butler scares me. He's just, it, it, I don't know why. He's, you know, 47 point game earlier than the week. Needs 40 for value. What does Wiggins need for value? 31. Look, I think Butler is worth a deeper look as well. It's just, that's four dudes from Tim the Timberwolves. Towns, Gibson, Teague, Butler. Um, take bigger peeks at them. Um, Gibson's not as interesting to me on DK. He's got a $400 more salary on DK than FanDuel, which is not usually a, a, a good scenario. Um, and Teague's probably a little bit higher than I would like him on DK, but uh, Towns for sure. Um, definitely worth a look. Butler too. I'm probably going to have at least one Timberwolf, not two. Off to the Kings. Great. Um, I, this is going to take about 10 seconds just to let you guys know that nothing looks good. Because I know when I skipped a game previously, I had some questions, you know, wondering my opinions on it. My opinions were just that, you know, both teams were shit and we didn't need to look at them. Um, nobody plays real minutes. They played 14 guys on Wednesday, which is never going to be like super great. At, like with the lowest being Scal of seven, who's probably better than most of these guys look just don't get any kings they've got a 96 point implied total it's 21st it's a quarter point better than the bulls and they're just bad until they start running out darren fox and healed and justin jackson willie Cauley stein and playing those dudes you know 30 plus minutes a game and taking their lumps i mean they're just going to keep giving 20 minutes to george hill and garrett temple and zebo and like not you're just now you're just shit and you're playing people that aren't going to be a part of your future. So, it go Kings. Uh, Blazers. So, I talked about... I don't know if I talked about it in the first video or the live video on Wednesday. How, if I ever like Lillard, I try to take McCollum. If I like McCollum, I try to take Lillard because I'm usually always wrong. Um, and I felt that way again on Wednesday 
and I liked uh, Lillard a lot, so I took McCollum, and I should have took Lillard <laughs> instead of Westbrook. Spent that money elsewhere. But I like Lillard tonight, and not even trying to do any other funny business, but I do like CJ. Like, it, it's hard to like one and not the other. Because I feel like they're just so... I don't I don't know what it is. It's like watching... It's like cloning a guy in NBA 2K. And just having two of them. Even though, like, I know that that's not how this works. So... You, the only thing you have to be wary about... You know, Portland doesn't have the best implied total. 103. It's 15th. But they're seven-point favorites. It's great that they're on the road in this scenario. Because otherwise you'd have like serious blowout potential. And this, because if this game were in Portland, it'd be gigantic spread. But other than that, I'm I'm good on Blazers. So it's it's Dame and CJ, and that shouldn't really shock a single soul. Off to the big four. First one up is Denver. And I need to put the hustle on finishing this up. Glad I spent so much time talking about absolute nonsense. Denver, number one implied total, 116 points. Um, you're going to want parts of the next two games for sure. They're going to be chalky, so if you're playing cash, you're going to need parts of these games. Um, I hope you didn't take Mason Plumley in his six minutes and negative one fantasy points uh, a couple nights ago. I'm sure you didn't. Let's think about this. Pelicans. So Rondo's supposed to get like 22 minutes or something along those lines. Um, which is... I don't know how I feel about that from a Denver perspective. Millsap is 70... Jokic is... Okay, Jokic is 93. He needs 46... I mean, he's, he's either 20, 25, or 60, so. I don't think Jokic is the spot. Millsap needing 36. They're going to have, I, I would, you know, Millsap, I have him in for 31 minutes because I need to be realistic on that projection. But. You know, Millsap getting big minutes having to deal with AD and Boogie is a real thing. He just needs to stay out of foul trouble. Um, so I like Millsap tonight. Uh, I'm still ignoring Wilson Chandler. I don't care that he put up 33 fantasy points in his last one because he has been just absolutely atrocious for the rest of the season. Not going to be the time. He, he needs to do it way more often for me to, to be super interested. Um... Mentally, I can't remember which of Gary Harris and Will Barton were just hurt. I think it was Gary Harris. It was Gary Harris. Um, I have Gary Harris back. I'm pretty sure he's supposed to play. If you want to fire up Jamal Murray, I would understand it. But... I don't know. This could be a situation where Rondo tries and does like cheeky stuff to a young dude. These guys are just so much in the middle ground. Like they seem to just be priced correctly, so there's no real standout value. If Gary Harris were out, it might look a little bit different for Will Barton. But now with him back, they're just they're eating up too much minutes. Too many minutes. Too much minutes. That's just terrible speak. Let's hop to the Pels. Pelicans have 109.5 implied total, which is fifth. Um, I had AD on Wednesday. Again, another guy that was set up pretty well at halftime to be close to value and then just you know tapered off really bad. Him and Boogie both picked up real nonsense fouls with like four or five minutes to go in the second quarter that ended up shelving both of them. Boogie went out first. AD had like a minute without him. You know, got a Got a bucket on a roll, maybe a board, and then picked up some ticky tack foul and had to sit with three. They both had three, and I was like, okay, Boogie picked up the foul, great. 
you know, I hope he's highly owned and that pisses everyone off. I've got AD. You know, these next four minutes could be, you know, pretty tasty. He could put up like 15 fantasy points in four minutes if he really like got crazy. And then he just immediately picked up a foul. So anyway, um, I'm in for a lot of the Pels. I think Boogie is a great spot. Jokic is not the best defender. Um, Anthony Davis scares me. But not enough to disregard him. And then I like Drew a lot tonight. Um, I mean, Jamal Murray, not a good defender. Moutier, not a good defender. Uh, I think that Drew is in a really good spot to knock down some shots. I'm interested to see how he plays alongside Rondo. In the minutes that I saw them play together on Wednesday, he looked. they looked good. They looked really in sync. He was, they were finding each other. Um, I don't know if that played out the rest of the game. I turned it off at halftime, but I liked it. I liked what I saw. It, I mean, they're not going to be good because of it, because Rondo's not very good, but I'd like to at least see like them clicking, which is fine with me. I don't care if they're good as a team, as long as they seem to be like motivated by each other. So you definitely want to have parts of the Nuggets-Pelicans game. And then Lakers-Suns. Lakers coming off some rest. Suns are going to be on a back-to-back. -back. Um, so I like Julius Randle. For sure. He grades out really well in my projections on both sites. Pretty cheap value play. The Lakers are 110.5. Uh, implied total, it's fourth for the night. Um, Lonzo's minutes scare the hell out of me. And I know that um, Luke Walton had a quote yesterday that, you know, like Lonzo's not going to go to the bench, but played 28 minutes on Monday, played 21 minutes on Wednesday. I don't know if he's just too busy thinking about how his brother's snatching Louis Vuitton purses in China or whatever the, in the world they were thinking about doing, but I his minutes scare me, but the Suns are so bad that I think it'd be crazy to not at least take a deeper look at him tonight. And he doesn't even necessarily grade out well for me in the numbers, but this is just more of a feel thing. It's one of those games where he's playing against more guys that are sort of his age. Not that Tyson Chandler is any great shakes, but him being out is just one less like only defender dude um, on the Suns. So it's not a place that I'm gonna look. I'll also look at Brooke Lopez if I needed to punt at center, um, because uh, again, no Chandler, so it's not like Greg Monroe is going to put him on lockdown, or you know, Alex uh, like uh, Brook Lopez isn't going to be terrified of Alex Len. Brandon Ingram at 6,200 on Fanduel, which is 31 implied points to hit 5x. He had a coming out party on Wednesday, and the rest of it's sort of been stinky earlier in that week like you can you can roster basically anybody that I'm showing here speaking of I want to take a deeper look at Jordan Clarkson I had him on Wednesday and he put up that 40 burger which was great um, but like because of this game because of the high total because of each deep both teams being trash like Lonzo's in play, KCP's in play, Clarkson's in play, Ingram's in play, Kuzma's in play, Randall's in play, Lopez is in play. All of these guys have the ability to put up big numbers because it's just that perfect game. So I would imagine this game is going to be crazy chalky. Um, there's going to be ownership all over the place in here. And a lot of the, a lot of it is going to be figuring out who fits in perfectly around whatever else, whatever big guys you're taking. And by big guys, I mean high salary guys you're taking around the rest of it. So, like, 
you know, Brooke Lopez comes off the table if you think that DeMarcus Cousins is going to be your best play on FanDuel. So right away, like, you're lopping out Brooke Lopez's value and you're immediately starting to think, like, okay, can I fit in Julius Randle? Can I fit in Jordan Clarkson? So I think the Lakers are going to be a spot that I use as, like, my filler. I'm going to be happy to take most of whatever's here in the spots after I fill in everything else, which is a great problem to have. Usually leads me to be wrong. We'll hash that out in the live feed um, later tonight. Phoenix is the last look. 106 implied total. Ninth on the night. I keep forgetting to uncheck the other team. Um, yeah, so Greg Monroe is the first thing I'm going to write here. I hate that he's a center because there are 11 games. So that's usually a big center pool. Um if Chandler's not playing and Greg Monroe is playing, like Greg Monroe is like by far the best player on the Suns. Especially in a fantasy sense. Like he's gonna score and the Lakers aren't very good. So he might be like something close to a lock if he's playing twenty five plus minutes. Which is crazy. like he's his value is bonkers for me tonight. So fire up Greg Monroe if you have the ability. Fire him up especially on DK because you could do power forward center stuff so it opens it up. It's more limiting on um, on FanDuel to really lock into him. Uh, I liked Bender last night. He put up seven, so I'm glad that I didn't, one, I didn't play, two, I didn't you know publicize that knowledge until right now, but I thought he was in a really good uh, spot to like knock down some shots and you know, he played 23 minutes and didn't do uh, shit. So, other than that, um, look like Booker's gonna get a lot of KCP, but I don't know if that's really like the biggest deal in the world. Um, the prices on Phoenix are kind of wonky. Like TJ Warren's scary at 7,500, but I like Greg Monroe for me is as close to a lock as possible on DK and we'll see where the like point guard small forward power forward big dudes shake out for me because I'd love to be able to do like LeBron Westbrook you know another big power forward and then have guys like OG and Greg Monroe to offset those big salaries. Um, Marquise Chris, 45. Yeah. Um, if you think you've got a handle on like TJ Warren for tonight, that makes sense to me. He should be in a good offensive spot. So if he's if he's looking for it, it's a good TJ Warren night, but he's pretty expensive. I think I'm going to focus just on Monroe for right now. We'll see, we'll see what news comes out by the end of the night. So after all of that, which I've been rambling for a long time, I apologize for the length. It's hard on an 11 game slate to touch on every team when in all actuality, most don't need to be touched on. Um, but that's it for me. So I would love it if you could drop a like on the video, subscribe if you can, still trying to chug along and get up to uh, a thousand subscribers so that I can um, monetize this channel, which would be dope. But other than that, um, I'll be around most of the day on Reddit or Twitter or you know email, whatever you guys need to do. Um, projections will be updated whenever you see this video and I'll be making updates throughout the day. Look back to the channel uh, probably around 6 Eastern tonight. I'm going to go live and do my lineup builds uh, up until lock. So I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.